And the future is uncertain tonight for a family-owned business in Canton. And the flooding left many of their prized pianos worthless. News 13's Hannah McKenzie has the story. A pile of damp pianos stacked on the side of Asheville Highway. You are looking at years of history and hard work, and this could be the end of a third generation family owned business. Still have no power, no water yet. Siblings Alden and Kelly Ward taking us on a tour of Ward Piano Company Incorporated. The 77 year old business started by their grandfather. Door to door piano salesman. Things looking much different today. We just went ahead and stripped walls. The showroom, workshop and storage building inundated with three to four feet of flood water from Tropical Storm Fred. You can see on that window right there. Yeah, it was hitting right there. The wards still assessing the damage, estimating at least 70 prized pianos now worthless. So some of them are sticking just from the moisture. They are hoping to salvage about a dozen because the actual mechanics of the piano were was not in the water. It's just cosmetic part the legs. No word yet on state or federal aid following Governor Roy Cooper's tour of the area Wednesday. We've lost a lot of roads, bridges, homes, businesses, public institutions. We want to make sure that we are eligible for everything that we can get. The wards getting a chance to speak with him. Do you think it was it made a big impact on him to see how We're you know hoping. local families are hurting? We, we hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We hope. Um, I mean, he had to drive by here as he left and as he came in, so, you know, he could see the damage that was done to us. COVID-19 already taking a chunk out of their profits. Now the wards, pianos, tools, equipment and transport truck gone. Of course, this right here pretty much put the nail in, in the coffin, so to speak, but it doesn't mean we're done. It's just it's going to take us a while to see where we stand. The wards tell me they're waiting to hear about possible aid options as well as information from their insurance agency before they make a decision on the fate of their business. Many are looking for financial assistance. Yes, that's true of the owner of this automotive shop in Canton destroyed by water and mud. He looks to the governor to help him and many others. You know, this is only part. This is how the story begins, not how it ends. That's right. I lost equipment that I just bought this year. David Clark put this business together with his hands. Rushing water took his chestnut automotive business away and his grading equipment. I just bought a black hole, a track hole, and a dump truck. Like many, he's wondering what happens now. No flood insurance. I just want to know if there's going to be some kind of help for everybody. Got to get it right. Got to get it right. Governor Roy Cooper touring the damage at the state level, getting a damage assessment together for FEMA. Try to get a federal declaration that can get us as much help as we possibly can get. The governor says that process must be careful. We want to make sure that we are eligible for everything that we can get. President Biden, federal government, give us the resources that we need. Canton Mayor Zeb Smathers says the deliberate procedure will put as much possible on the table. You give us what we need and we will rebuild not just buildings, but we're going to rebuild this community. Businesses damaged. Yeah, we pray. Homes like Barbara Hendricks's house destroyed deemed unsafe. When the water started coming in the house, we started going upstairs and we could hear it popping and creaking and I thought, you know, this may really be it. Financial aid will be needed to recover and for businesses like David Clark's to resume. But he says above everything, he's most concerned about the loss of life in Caruso and Tennessee and for those needing a place to live. And I've lost all the income, but most importantly, there's people that's homeless. I want them to I have a home again before I have a shop. And David Clark grateful also for friends, churches, even complete strangers coming by to lend a hand. And tonight, a local nurse is opening up about the toll the pandemic is having on health care workers. It's happening as Mountain Health leaders are sounding the alarm on increasing case numbers. News 13's Andrew James has more on the local COVID outlook. The Henderson County Board of Health released this letter to the community calling local COVID numbers unsettling. In the letter, the board details its concerns and recommendations for how to get COVID numbers in check. 
Exponential increases with daily cases now averaging more than 60. That's just one of the concerns outlined in a community letter from the Henderson County Board of Health. We wanted to release this letter just because these are things that are really important right now for protecting the community's health. Board Chair Dr. Maggie Hayes tells me she's worried about Henderson County's positivity rate, increased hospitalizations, and greater demand for ICU beds. In the letter, she asked the community to consider two actions to protect themselves, masks and vaccines. I think that the sooner we can get more people vaccinated, the sooner we will move out of the pandemic, truly. I think that vaccines are, are the key to getting out of the pandemic. Our levels of transmission at this point are really high, um, and so it 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 might take us a few weeks to sort of see that even start to dampen um, that a little bit. Buncombe County Public Health Director Stacy Saunders says the positivity rate is now up to 9.4%, adding that recent data shows that unvaccinated people are three and a half times more likely to get COVID-19. What we know about vaccines, vaccines are safe and effective and they are working to reduce severe illness, hospitalizations and death. Buncombe County passed a mask mandate for indoor public spaces August 18th. Saunders says it's too early to see any impacts from that. When they see numbers, they forget that those are people. Mission Health nurse Erica Mullis sees people battling COVID-19 every day, telling me the pandemic is putting extra stress on healthcare workers. When units are filling up and we're having to have overflow units and we don't have the staff to take care of them, it is really impactful to even people who don't have COVID. The Buncombe County Public Health Director was also asked about how local kids going back to school is impacting COVID numbers. Right now, she says it is still too early to tell, but they're watching the numbers closely.